You know what's wild? Back in 2019, I made my first animation. It had few shape layer, few keyframes, some lame easing, and I was proud. I genuinely thought I had cracked the code. And that same animation would barely survive two seconds on Instagram before getting swiped away. Because here's the truth, the bar has been raised. What used to be great animation is now just expected. The industry is moving fast, attention spans are shorter, and every scroll is competition. But that's not a bad thing. It just means one thing, you gotta level up. And in the next seven minutes, I'm going to show you all the small but powerful tricks I've learned to make your animations look 10 times better. As beginners, we're very proud of the achievements we make. And the same goes for animation. If it took me an hour to create this flower animation, I'd probably want it to stay on the screen for more than 10 seconds too. But that's exactly where we mess up. New motion trends favor more fluid and quick moving animations to match our attention spans that are constantly being destroyed by Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts. So select all those keyframes, hold Alt and just drag them back a little on the timeline to make the whole animation faster. Yep, that should do it. So that's it. That's the whole tutorial. Make the animation faster. But how fast? Surely I don't want to make it too fast, right? A good rule of thumb is to imagine how the object you're animating would move in real life. You can do that pretty easily if you have more than 10 years of experience as a human being. Let's take the good old example of a ball bouncing animation. First, let's throw the ball into the air. I'll put the start position of the ball outside the comp so we don't have to animate the person tossing it. Then it goes up in the air, a little forward and comes down. I'll separate the positions since we don't need the X value for this animation. I've randomly placed the keyframes at first so I can show you what better spacing looks like. This is something I personally do to time my animations. In my head, I'll imagine a ball toss and hit space simultaneously. And as soon as my imaginary ball reaches its peak height, I'll hit space again to stop the playhead. This is the length I'll space my keyframes to match. Similarly for the second part when it comes down and touches the ground. Now if we play this, it still looks bad. That's because it lacks easing. If you've watched the previous chapter, where I explained easing and graphs in motion design, you know what's missing here, easing and graphs. So I'll select these three keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them. Think of this as default easing, but we don't want that. We want custom easing because that's what takes the animation to the next level. With the keyframes selected, I'll click this icon to enter the graph editor and start easing. But how do I know what will be the best easing? Well, I follow the same concept here too. I imagine a ball shooting upwards, slowing down and almost stopping at the top and then speeding up on the way down. For the first part to shoot up quickly, I'll drag this bezier handle like this. A common beginner mistake is to judge your easing only by these handles. Don't. The actual easing is represented by the curve and that's what you should focus on. Here, it's shooting up very quickly at first, then going almost linear toward the end but we want it to be slower toward the top, so we'll flatten the curve in the center a bit. Not for too long though, because on the way down, the ball will slowly start speeding up, so we'll adjust the graph to show that increasing speed. If we play this animation now, you'll see it looks much better. Of course, this ball is coming down and not going back up, so we have to add more keyframes. This time, the ball won't go as high, and it can keep decreasing over time. Do the easing the same way. And once you're done animating, you'll notice that your graph editor looks like a ball bouncing across your timeline. This is something I love to see. When you do everything perfectly, even your graph editor starts to make sense. But we're not done yet. There are still a bunch of things we can do to improve this animation. Let's start with Schmear. When we look at fast moving objects, it appears as if they leave a trail behind. If you're familiar with games, you'll recognize this as motion blur. Luckily, after Effects has a native option to enable motion blur on any layer. The problem is, motion blur in animation often looks out of place. Instead, we use schmears, solid trails that act like motion blur. A very easy way to do this is to add the echo effect. When you apply it, you'll see objects leave trails behind. All you need to do is adjust the delay to a sweet spot where the trails appear very close, almost as if the object is being stretched by speed. 
You can set the trail length using the number of echoes and make sure you set the operator mode to maximum. You can save this effect as a preset by going to animation, save animation preset, or an even better way, and something I personally love, is to use the free plugin from Battleaxe called Schmear. It's super easy to use and there are many tutorials on it. But we started our animation with a blooming flower. If we compare our animation to real life, am I supposed to make the blooming flower animation play for hours? Well, no. You're free to take abstract approaches to motion design sometimes and do whatever you feel like. Remember, just like any other design, motion design is also about experimentation. Play around and find what works best for you instead of sticking strictly to so-called principles. But yes, basics are important to set a good foundation. So instead, I'll just find a sweet spot for these keyframes where I really like the blooming animation. Now, a hack I've found to make any animation composition look a lot better is to animate more. Add more animations to the scene. Let's start by adding a scale animation to this flower. I'll add two scale keyframes and give them an ease out so it animates nicely when it appears. Beautiful. Now, you see these gradients? I'll animate their position at the same time and with the same easing as the scale. This not only adds more movement but also introduces reaction. Reaction is extremely important in motion design and almost no principles of motion design nerds talk about it enough. Just like in the real world, your objects needs to react to other objects. For example, if I animate the scale property here, maybe the sheer force of the flower scaling down will cause the gradient to bloom out. Also, if there are any other nearby elements, they might get pushed outward by the blooming petals. All of this is very imaginative and abstract, so it might not make sense to everyone, but I'm trying my best to explain it here. And the last thing. Give your animation offset. It just works every time. It's an easy way to give your animation that extra boost. You can imagine offset like a linear graph. Right now, we've given it equal delay, and if you don't want to do any of this yourself, another type of offset you can use is mine. I run a design studio called Offset, where I do motion design, UI, 3D, and no-code websites for startups. Link in description. So that should do it for this video. Remember to keep experimenting with your motion. That's the only way you're going to stand out. If you like what I'm doing here, a like would be super motivating. 